Okay, so in front of me are two phones that are super popular, and the reason why they're so popular is largely a result of their price. These are around $300, $350 each. This is the K20 Pro, this is the Mi 9T, and the reason why I'm looking at them is because they're very similar in a whole bunch of aspects to the phone that I'm currently using, the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now this is a $680 phone, it's very expensive. These are like half price versions of the OnePlus 7 Pro. If you look at their specs, there's a lot in common. The K20 Pro is geared towards Asian markets, the Mi 9T is geared for international markets, but it's essentially the same phone just with a different processor. Now compared to the OnePlus, these both have the same kind of design. It has this clean AMOLED display with no notches, no punch holes. It's got an in-display fingerprint sensor, a pop-up selfie camera. It has a Snapdragon 855, and it's got this glass and aluminum sandwich design going on. And both of the Xiaomi phones have this triple camera system on the back. In fact, it uses the same Sony sensor as the one on the OnePlus. Plus 7 Pro. The spec list on this K20 Pro is just nutty. It's crazy that they're selling this hardware for the equivalent of 360 US dollars. Now, if you look at the market at this price point, there's usually some kind of compromise or some kind of corner cutting that's been done to hit that price point. Like even the Paco phone from the same company was built with a plastic shell, but the K20 Pro has this legitimate premium feel and look to it. The camera system, I thought that it would just be bad with photos, but it's surprisingly good. The stock camera app shoots way better than I thought it would, but because this phone has been out for a while, there are several versions of the Gcam app available for this phone, and they work for all the cameras. So daylight photos, low light photos, night shots, front facing selfie cameras, Gcam does all of it right now, and they're good. The photos that I'm getting from the Gcam app off of the K20 Pro look better to me than the stock camera app on the OnePlus 7 Pro. The one disadvantage I would say that comes with that Gcam app is that the double tap to launch the camera, like to hit the power switch twice to launch the camera app, that still launches the default software, like you can't get it to launch the Gcam as of right now, but I think it's totally worth it. Okay. The build on this phone is also really good. It's got the Gorilla Glass back and front, it's got the aluminum frame, and the fit and finish is on point. I do kind of have mixed feelings about this material, like by having a metal and glass phone like this, it sits alongside with all the premium flagship boys out there, but I mean, it's a $360 phone. I feel like this should have been plastic. Not to reduce the cost or anything, but at this price point, like the user base just wants durability, and we've seen it, right? The plastic phones are just, they last longer, they just wear better than a glass and metal phone, but I think it looks good. I think it actually looks really good for the money. The black carbon fiber finish looks so much nicer to me than that red whatever they have going on, but just the black one looks simple and it's just like, a, it's, a, it's a good look. The other phone I have, the Mi 9T, has the black matrix skin on it from Dbrand. So there's other good stuff on these two phones. There's the headphone jack on both of them and the battery life is solid. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and I'm getting over eight hours of screen on time. And the screen on both of these has a flat surface. Unlike the OnePlus 7 Pro with the curved edges, I've complained about these curved edges on all of the kind of recent flagship phones, flat edge on the Xiaomi. So there's no accidental clicks with your palm and stuff like that. Uh, there are some shortcomings with the Xiaomi phones and I'm just gonna go through a couple of them. Obviously there's no 90 Hertz screen. This is not something that I would peg as like a $300 value add, but the fact that it's missing is something that I noticed. But more importantly, the biggest problem with both of these phones to me is the software. And I'm not talking about the actual UI and stuff like that. It just feels a lot choppier and laggier than I'd expect. Now, some of it is hardware, like the OnePlus is running UFS 3 storage, this is not, but I think the vast majority of it is software issues. Like you're seeing stutters everywhere. If you're typing on the keyboard, pulling up a website, switching apps, there's just micro stutter that appears throughout the entire interface. And it's not often, like it happens maybe once every minute, maybe every two minutes, but the fact remains it's there and it's, it is noticeable, especially when you're coming off a really smooth experience from the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, is it a big deal? No, like not at all. It is noticeable and the only reason why I'm even bringing this up is just to kind of illustrate the difference between the two phones, but the OnePlus 7 Pro was geared for speed like through the entire process that they built this thing. Fast hardware, fast like everything on this thing. The K20 Pro, it's got a fast processor, but everything else around it just feels less polished. It's still a great phone, but that's really where that extra money goes to, the overall kind of speed feel of the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now there is another variant to the K20 Pro, which is the Mi 9T. 
This runs basically the same kind of hardware except the processor is slower. For me, it's only noticeable in games, but if you need the international version for more LTE bands for wherever you live, then you're gonna have to deal with the slower Snapdragon 730 instead of the 855. Now, I can't really finish this discussion without talking about what I think is the best valued kind of phone in the market right now. So this is the S9 Plus. I've talked about this thing a lot. When they first launched this phone, I really liked it. And then a year and a half later, the price has gone down a lot and I still love this phone. I, you can get this thing for like 350, 400 bucks. And normally, when I talk about value in phones, this has always been like the winner. If you want like a $350, $400 phone right now, it's always been like, get the S9 from last year. But because of how good these phones are, I'd openly recommend them over the S9 right now, unless you absolutely need wireless charging or stereo speakers because neither of these phones have them. But that's basically it. Both of these phones are great values, like $300, $350 price point. If you're interested in something in that range, you should check these out. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.